You're listening to Tori Writer's She Said What podcast. I'm Tori, along with Marcy Persky. Are you one of those people who dresses up your tiny children in sports regalia? How about if it's sports regalia that makes them look like cleaning supplies? Also, Marcy finds she may be too elderly for backyard camping. I noticed you had the grandbaby all dolled up in sports regalia <laughs> for the most recent football game. For the Lions game. And he's, he's my good luck charm. Every game that he's worn his little hat and his little suit, we've won. And I know you don't care about any not of that. All, not at all. I just want but, to know, why would you put your kid in a hat that looks like a mop? It's not a mop. It's a lion's mane. It's a blue lion's mane. It's got little ears, and it's got the Detroit Lions logo on the front of it. And did you see how big he was smiling? You cannot see the Detroit Lions logo because the hat looks like a mop. Well, it's a lion's mane. Come on. Come on. Okay. All right. All right. The Lions won, so yay. Clearly, I don't know anything about dressing children in sports regalia and and my own family oh no, you don't my own family just hopes that I don't discard valuable hats and shirts especially now <laughs> there that you go. their baseball team has left the bay area so they're going to have a collection in their closet like you have in your closet of t-shirts i guess they hope will be a valuable items one day yep and i still i mean even if my team is losing i still wear my shirts but, um, yeah, they're finally winning, and I'm happy, and nobody else in this house cares about sports, so I sit and pretty much By watch yourself? the game with the baby. Aw. Yeah. Well, you can raise him any way you want. Once again, I, I went out to door knock <laughs> to get out the boat. This time I did it to myself. I signed up to walk a precinct in the middle of the Packers game in the nearby city of Kenosha, Wisconsin. <laughs> yeah. Good luck. Well, you know, it's interesting. You get to talk to all kinds of people. You get to talk to everybody's, uh, you, you get to be a listening ear. You get to hear a Marine veteran come out and complain vociferously about his brother-in-law who doesn't know what's good for him. That was kind of fun. Okay. And uh, got to talk. Wait, he doesn't take, wait, he doesn't take his vitamins or what? The Marine veteran or the brother-in-law? The brother-in-law. The brother-in-law, according to the gentleman with whom I spoke, is intransigent and voting against his own best interests. Uh, A lot uh, of people do that. Yeah, a lot of people really do. But then the thing that really got me, and I know we've touched on this before, the obscene political uh, things that people put up, I, I I don't care what party. I don't think people need a big flag flying on your front lawn that says F name of candidate here and i really don't think that you're going to make friends and influence people with a really expensive pickup truck towing a really expensive boat that has a sticker on your back window that makes comparisons of genitalia sizes between a female candidate and a male candidate i i just i don't know what kind of person says it's socially appropriate for me to put this vaguely obscene bumper sticker right here in my rear window and drive it all around town. I don't. What is behind that? I told you, I do not understand. I went to a craft show, a craft show, and more than half of the vehicles parked outside and down the street had these uh, the swear word kinds of uh bumper stickers on their cars that was not acceptable 20 years ago or even 10 years ago i don't think i secretly want to come back to their houses in the middle of the night and (laughs) and write it with soap so they can wash it off right on the same rear window or the bumper thank you for letting me know what an anal orifice is driving this vehicle but (laughs) i i wouldn't use the words anal orifice i would use a different word um People are just rude, and they can't have any kind of civil public discourse anymore. And I I would never put, like, F-words all over my car. Yeah. But then again, the name of our ranch is the blank storm of awesomeness. 
and you can't see the sign over the top of the ranch unless you drive all the way into our driveway between the trees. But I'm not wishing like bad words on a person. Right. You're not using that kind of language to to call somebody out. It's very odd. And I would never do that. I, who wants their kids seeing that stuff? You want to go up and knock on their door. And here's the other part. No, you don't, because you'll be greeted by a gun. Oh, Here, right here's way. what I want to say to these people, really. Like, isn't this what the internet is for? Don't, don't you have the internet where you can just leave random insults at people and, and troll them and stop well, yeah, them? And... Now you can post anonymous. Yeah. Well, so why You don't not? even have to give your name. Right. Why, why drive around with these kinds of statements on a truck that anybody can run the plates of or see where it's parked? Isn't that sort of inviting people to take the same kind of firearm and just put a little extra pinstriping on your vehicle? I just... No, 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 it's uh, not. No. no, I don't think it is. I, I'm going to say that the majority of people are with you and I on this. Okay. And it, the, it's the minority, but it sticks out because, like I said, it didn't used to be socially acceptable. Another irony of this, because, of course, we all know that you most of the people say these things on the Internet, and apparently this guy is claiming extra honor points for being willing to be disgusting and rude in public. The, the other part of that is that if this person had a conversation with me and claimed that under the other the other side, he was doing a lot worse. I, I would be compelled to point out that his truck costs more than most people make in five years. And so, you know, clearly he's not doing too badly here. Yeah, some of these trucks cost the same as a house. Yes, that's my point. I've yeah. never seen a truck that looked as expensive as this truck, and I've seen a few. So that was my day yesterday. <laughs> And today, I, I really wish I'd had that shock collar you described because I just uh -oh. looked what at the schedule. What did you just volunteer to do? No, uh, no. Well, someone volunteered me for something. But I just looked at the calendar of people who are coming to my home starting Thursday. Every house catered. You know, sometimes I think that would be wise. I, don't, I just... Uh, anyway. Catered by Trader Joe's. Bakers are like I walked into my girlfriend's house the other day. It's a three generation house. It's beautiful, and everybody does beautifully there. It's my girlfriend, her partner, her adult daughter, her daughter's husband, and their three children. And it was just like one of these lovely, lovely idyllic scenes that never ever happened in my family and never ever will. The, the, yeah, you don't know what happens behind closed doors. The adult, you don't watch no, enough do. commercial TV. I'm around enough. I, I I hear the I hear it. I mean, I actually watched two of the younger children argue about who was going to pour which kind of juice for whom. And I looked at the 13-year-old and I said, "Really? What kind of juice you pour? That's the hill you want to die on?" <laughs> so I, I'm aware that it's less than ideal, but I walk in in this particular scene, there is the 13 year old and her mom making scones and donuts. And of course, I couldn't be satisfied with just one scone. I had to say, these are really good. May I have another one? <laughs> <laughs> I left there feeling like a scone and also feeling like my family it just doesn't compare to their family, and and I I have that feeling a lot these days. I look at other people's families, and they're they're like all going on camping trips, and I'm thinking only three out of the four people in this family would be willing to go on a camping trip. And as the years go on, <laughs> what a coincidence! One of them is not I. I am not the one who's going on the camping trip. So I I'm, was just going to tell you about a camping trip. Please do. So. <laughs> You know, we bought our we bought our own campground, so we haven't really been camping for like eight years mm -hmm. since we came up here, where there are no neighbors and a lot of trees mm -hmm. and a lot of property. And since you but can put up a tent where it's far enough exactly. away and close enough that you can pee in your own toilet, we, which is ideal. Yes, and Frankie had that excavator last week. Mm -hmm. We had it all week to pile trees for the winter for logs and. Uh, he dug our fire pit about two feet deeper back there. And so he wanted to go camping this weekend. We have to camp. And so he set it up Friday. And the idea was to camp Saturday night. Right. 
Friday. So Friday, we're sitting there and we're just doing nothing. And Frankie said, let's go practice camp. Let's <laughs> take the dog and practice camp because we have a camp for a couple of years. And I was like, okay. So first of all, we take Belly the bulldog, who's never been camping, and she hated every second of it. I'm with she was afraid of the campfire. She couldn't see anything because it was dark. She was very unhappy. Then Frankie made four trips back to the house, including when we realized that we hadn't eaten anything all day. <laughs> and he had to run back and make sandwiches because I had this whole meal planned out for the next night, campfire meal. So we had no food. We had our blankets, sheets, and no sleeping bag because it had been really warm during the day. It went down to 32 degrees. Holy and we froze. Moses. Like, Finally, at four o'clock in the morning, he ran back to the house to pick up a sleeping bag. And while he was gone, I'm hearing like this rustling in the grass. And it's like, I told you we have all kinds tarantulas. of critters out here. The tarantulas are moving, you said, plus bobcats. Well, bobcats, uh, wildcats, you name it, they're out here. And it's just like literally scared the pee out of me i couldn't move i was frozen scared and it comes leaping it out literally scared stupid... the pee out it's... of you. you peed in your tent no i went out by my pee tree oh, okay i have a i have a tree that's made perfectly for hanging a roll of toilet paper on this... and then you just throw it on the campfire because we recycle impressive. everything wait a minute you burn pee toilet <laughs> paper uh yeah Ugh. what else would you do with it i bury it maybe no that affects wildlife I don't want some wildlife. Well, you think the animal. birds? You think Digging the birds are happy with your urine scented cloud of smoke that you're sending up into the atmosphere? Why? Why? How much they're... do you think one person pees? I don't know how much you pee, but well, how much when we're do you camping, think... it's not. How much? It's not you... a lot of toilet paper. How much do you think your pee toilet paper would bother somebody in a hole in the ground? Except maybe a tarantula, and who cares? Because there are there's nobody there. around. So... There's nobody around except for my dog. My dog. And my cat, who decided that he would join us. Oh. So Derp found us hiding in the in the woods and scared the crap out of me. Oh, now it's and crap. So, oh, now it, it wasn't Now it's pee. crap. Yeah. No. Okay. If it was crap, I'd be running back to the house. Ah. And so we, when Saturday night rolled around, we looked at each other and said, I think we're done. We're too old for this. And so on Sunday, he went and tore down our campsite. Can I just but, say that the revelation that you are slowly coming to, the realization <laughs> that you're too that old, old for some things, it's not just you. I was walking around in Kenosha, Wisconsin, and all of a sudden a storm blew in. And ah. we got rain and we got practically sleet. It wasn't quite that cold. And there I am in my little sandals and my I had a sweatshirt. And some nice lady at a door offered me an umbrella and I'm saying, well, if I had an umbrella, I can't carry all this crap they make you carry around when you remind people that it's not too late to register and they can still vote, etc. So we wimped out. We sat in the car for a solid half hour and ate sandwiches. Well, there you go. Until the rain subsided. Here's a good thing, though, about, about living in our time. You can yeah. look at your phone and the phone says that the rain will end at X31 and lo and behold, it's like the powerful Oz. It ended exactly on schedule. It's because they control the weather. Oh, no, don't start. <laughs> but yeah, we we decided we're, we're handing down our back 40 camping spot to uh, the baby and his daddy. Well, I think that Detroit uh, Lions hat would be really warm that night. It is. Thanks for listening to the Tory Writers She Said What podcast. Since you've made it to the end, you might want to know that my book, She Said What? A Life on the Air, is not only available in print, but now also in complete audiobook form, narrated by me and available on Audible. 